Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Zach Martin Kilgore here with Secrets of Longevity in Humans.com. Unfortunately, in the last year, there has been a death because of chocolate. At a factory in mid July 2009, a man fell into an eight foot deep vat of boiling chocolate and got hit in the head with a mixing paddle. Other than this one instance, I have not heard of a single other case of someone dying from chocolate, whether it's an accident involving it or the consumption of it. And of course, what I am going to be talking about in this video series is the consumption of chocolate, whether it's processed chocolate or mainly what I'm talking about is raw cacao, the raw chocolate which has the uh, nutrients and other chemical factors still intact compared to the processed chocolate that most people have grown up consuming and being around. So I've been following the whole pro-cacao, anti-cacao debate that is going on online and also offline, um, just in the world of, uh, I guess you could say raw food, because this is where the uh, there seems to be a lot of tension between people. A lot of the leaders have varying views on it. I've been following this whole uh, trend for quite a while. And I've come to certain conclusions which I wish to share with you. Um, first, I want to give you a bit of my background with raw chocolate as well as my lifestyle within that time that I was consuming raw chocolate as well as a bit before that. I've been consuming raw chocolate on a daily basis for over three years. Now, during that time, because of my own choice, I decided to take some breaks from it just to see whether I was addicted to it. I've taken every, everywhere from a whole month off of it to a, a week at a time to several weeks, even a couple days just to again test to see if I'm addicted to it. And maybe when I first began consuming this, uh, this wonderful food, I uh, experienced a bit of uh, enthusiasm about it and I was very uh, reluctant to uh, give it up. I wanted to eat as much of it as I could. Or maybe not quite as much of it as I could, but quite a bit of it. Whereas now, I'm at a point, and during this whole th three year span, I haven't had one single negative effect that I can recall. Um, except perhaps if I eat it right before bed, I can't sleep, but that's more due to the fact that I'm digesting food, which happens with any food for me. So the point I'm at now with my consumption of this food is that I can just put it away and not take it if I don't want to. I can do a juice fast for a couple of days and not have a slight urge to eat it. Yet when I come back off the fast, for instance, I choose to eat it because I know how good it is for me. And I've done the research and I know the factors that are in it that are doing my body good and I know what supposed problems there are with it are actually not true. And with this video uh, series, I'm going to talk about those mostly about the attacks that are done on cacao and how those are actually None of them are based on any truth or scientific evidence. Also, if you want to know about the benefits of cacao, I highly recommend you read my article, which I posted in the top right-hand info box. And you can follow that link to my website and read about the benefits of this amazing superfood. One of the things that's said quite commonly about chocolate in general by uh, naysayers is that it causes liver damage. Now, I find this absolutely ridiculous because I have not found one tiny shred of evidence online for chocolate causing any form of liver damage, or liver poisoning, you could say. I myself had liver damage in my teenage years from a lifestyle that uh, was not wholesome, you could say. And after coming out of that, not soon after, I began exploring raw chocolate. And I had no problem uh, with this food. Now, certain people who do have very severe liver damage, I was obviously, I, was, I wasn't incapacitated or anything. I wasn't on any sort of medication or treatment for it. It was just something I had to get through and work through with holistic means. But people who do have severe uh, liver damage, I would say that the factors in cacao that might not be the greatest for the liver is the high copper content and this goes for any food if you have liver damage is you want to avoid foods high in copper so that's not the theobromine so again moving on with this idea that cacao is toxic to the body or to the liver 
Um, another common argument used is that animals are react to chocolate and that dogs die, cats die. It's listed online, of course. You look up cacao poisoning, or rather theobromine poisoning, which is the uh, factor in chocolate that a lot of people vilify. And it is toxic in certain animals that have a slow metabolism for it. Just like if you were to take a cow and feed it meat, the meat would be toxic for the cow because it has a slow, very slow digestive system compared to a wolf. Now, a human has a very fast metabolism of uh, theobromine and other xanthins, which include uh, theophylline. So if you were to say theobromine is a poison, if you were to make that claim, you could also look at such other instances of nature, since we're, so many people are so enthusiastic to use nature as an example and twist, and twist that, those examples around so that they don't make any sense anymore. But if you were to take a bird that eats a poisonous berry, because there's a lot of berries out there that are poisonous, but birds have a, can metabolize them fine, and you, a human eats it and it's poison, does that mean that the bird shouldn't be eating it because it's not dying or getting as sick as the human does? No. Birds have a way of metabolizing that in a certain way. It's an alkaloid that they actually probably get some benefit from. That's the way nature's intended um, plant molecules to affect them. So alkaloids are minute amounts of toxins that are found in virtually all plant life. And different alkaloids do different things. So for example, I've already talked about theobromine, caffeine, and theophylline. But you look at any green food, a green leafy food, a blade of grass, which a lot of people in the raw food movement are consuming, they're advocating this as being healthy, they have alkaloids in them. Those are poisons. Does that mean we shouldn't be consuming them? No, they're beneficial to us. If you were to take an extract of that bitter alkaloid in one of these green foods, and you synthesized it in a laboratory and made a very large amount of concentrated uh, powder of it, and you fed it to an animal to the point where it died, and you determined an LD50 for it, and you proclaim that on the internet saying this food is poisonous, are people going to listen to that? No, people are pretty smart because they intuitively know that green foods are good for you. Now the same thing with theobromine. The LD50 has been determined for a variety of different animals, and yes, the ones that metabolize it slowly aren't really meant to eat it at all. They're not meant to consume any of it. If they happen to eat something in their natural environment that contains it, it's not going, hopefully not going to be in any large amount, and they'll, it'll process through them and they'll get rid of it, even if it's a slow metabolism. Now like I was saying about the supposed alkaloid in a green that was extracted hypothetically and concentrated, if they often, when they determine the LD50 of these things, they're astronomically high. To actually get a lethal dosage, that's what LD50 means, lethal, do lethal dosage at 50%, so in a test subject of rats, for example, when half the rats die at this amount, that determines the LD50. So again, with this hypothetical LD50 of some plant green or green plant alkaloid, um, if the LD50 were really high and people were looking at that and thinking, oh geez, if that amount of this alkaloid is contained in this plant matter and I need this much for it to kill me, what volume of plant matter or weight of plant matter is required to get that much of that synthetic uh, chemical that's been isolated in the laboratory? Well, it's probably a very large amount because alkaloids are very contained in very small quantities in foods. So in cacao, for example, the abromine is around 1.2% of the content of the cacao bean. Now, it takes 68 grams of theobromine to meet the LD50 in a 150 pound adult human. So what does that equal in terms of chocolate? Well, if you were to take dark baker's chocolate as a standard, um, that works out to be about 10.8 pounds. I don't know many people that even eat 10.8 pounds of chocolate a month. Perhaps there are some who do it per year, but this is dark chocolate we're talking about, so that's even more iffy. Perhaps if it was milk chocolate, but milk chocolate ends up being even more. It's like 96 pounds to reach the LD50. 
And that has to be in one day, in one set time period. If you were to eat that amount spread over even a week, it wouldn't kill you. It might not even give you much of a problem unless you were doing that right off the bat and you hadn't acclimatized your body to that uh, food.